Good morning and welcome to Take Your Life Back Today show. Today, I want to talk about something that we haven't spoken about in a while, and that is faith in humanity. There are 10 studies to restore your hope for the future, to have hope in others, to depend on others, to look in the good in others. All that will be discussed today, but first and foremost, I want to give a shout out to Larry Geis from the Geis Academy at 516-485-2741. That's 516-485-2741. That's Larry Geis from the Geis Academy. He will help you with your addiction to your recovery, hand in hand, 24 hours at a time. He will never ever talk about your past. It's about today and a better future for tomorrow. Call Larry Geis at 516-485-2741. Tell Larry that you heard about him on the Take Your Life Back Today show. GlobalEyeglasses.com, where they are focused on saving you money. Folks, if you want glasses that are either metal frames, plastic frames, full frames, half frames, or no frames, go to www.GlobalEyeglasses.com. If you want progressive lenses, line bifocals, transition, photochromatic, polarized, UV coated, anti reflective coated, uh, thinner lenses, plastic polycarbonate, which are shatterproof lenses, or uh, go to them uh, on their website at www.globaleyeglasses.com. Let them focus on 70 money. And folks, I have over 30 years of experience in the optometry business. Give me a text at 631-599-0218. And let me help pick out your glasses, pick out the right lenses, and together we'll make you see again. Faith in Humanity, 10 Studies to Restore Your Hope in the Future. Reading a lot about signs of human behavior can make you cynical, sometimes deservedly, so, but cynically, nonetheless. In this video, I try to be accurate and useful, and uh, as I have posted in previous uh, videos, the research shows there is a great power in optimism and hope, but we are lacking a lot of it within our own society. So I want to take a second to step back from brass tacks and take a look at some studies that can review and renew faith in humanity. The world is not always fair. We all know that. The bad are not always punished and the good are, uh, do not always prevail. But there are plenty of reasons scientifically tested to hope and to be positive for the future. Number one, you bounce back better from tougher problems. From a study by Harvard happiness expert Daniel Gilbert, author of Stumbling of Happiness, people rationalize divorces, demotions, diseases, but not slow elevators and uninspired burgundies. The paradoxical consequence is, is that people may sometimes recover more quickly from truly distressing experiences than from slightly distressing experience. Sometimes people have faced the most hardship in life are the ones that get through life and have a clearer picture of hope for the future. Number two, regret is not that scary. We anticipate regret will be much more painful than it actually is. Studies show we consistently overestimate how great effect uh, regret affects us. Another one from Stumbling on Happiness author Daniel Gilbert. Margin of loss can have an impact on emotional experience and our studies merely suggest that however powerful that impact is, it is not as powerful as people anticipated. Number three. What does not kill you makes you stronger. Is that often true? I think so. Individuals who went through the most awful events came out the stronger than those who did not face uh, uh, any or little adversity. In a month, 1,700 people reported at least one of these awful events and they took our well-being test as well. To our surprise, Individuals who experienced one awful event had more intense strengths and therefore higher well-being than individuals who had no uh, intense uh, or a bad experience. Individuals who had been through two awful events were stronger than individuals who faced one and individuals who had three, uh, like raped, tortured, and held captive, for example, were stronger than those who had two. The more you get tested in life. The more God puts on you, the stronger, my friend, you become. Reverse, number four is reverse. PTSD exists. Sometimes terrible events make us better people. Tragedy not only can make us stronger, it can also make us better human beings. 
thanks to a, to a study, today we can say for certain, not just in a, <clears throat> and a totally, that great suffering or trauma can actually lead to great positive changes across a wide range of experiences. After the March 11, 2004 train bombings in Madrid, for example, psychologists found many residents experienced positive psychological growth. So to, to do majority of women diagnosed with breast cancer, what kind of positive growth? Increases in spirituality, compassion for others, openness, and even eventually overall life satisfaction. After trauma, people also report enhanced personal strength and some self-confidence, as well as heightening of appreciation for and a greater intimacy in their social relationships. Number five, rarely in life are you limited by your genes. How often does natural talent limit what you are capable of? In 95% of cases, it doesn't. Benjamin Bloom, an eminent educational researcher, studied 120 outstanding achievers. They were concert pianists, pianists sculptures, Olympic swimmers, world-class tennis players, mathematicians, and research neurologists. Most were not remarkable as children and didn't show clear talent before their training began in earnest. Bloom concludes, after 40 years of intensive research, on school learning in the United States as well as abroad, abroad, my major conclusion is what any person in the world can learn, almost all persons can learn, if provided with the appropriate prior and current conditions of learning. He's not counting the 2-3% to 3 of children who have severe impairments and he's not counting the top 1-2% or 2 of children at the other extreme. He is counting everyone else. Number six. You don't need to win the lottery to be happy. Very happy don't experience more happy events than less happy people. Via 50 great myths of popular psychology shattering widespread misconceptions about human behavior, Ed Diner and Martin Seligman screened over 200 undergraduates for levels of happiness and compared the upper 10% extremely happy with the middle and bottom at 10%. Extremely happy students experience no greater number of objectively positive life events like doing well on exams or hot dates than did the other two groups. Number seven, helping others helps you. I've said this over and over. This is why I do these videos because when I help you with these videos, I help me. Undergrads who wrote letters of encouragement at risk middle schoolers advising them to uh, preserve and that intelligence is not a definite endowment but rather an explain, explanatory capacity became themselves happy and better at school for months afterwards. Number eight, both hope and despair are self-fulfilling prophecies. Blood work performed on soldiers in challenging situations shows the body is stressed by perceived not actual difficulty in circumstances. Via maximum brain power challenging the brain for health and wisdom. The brain does not want the body to expand its resources unless we have a reasonable chance of success. Our physical strength is not accessible to us if the brain does not believe in the outcome because the worst possible thing for humans to do is to expand all of our resources and fail. If we do not believe we can make it, we will not uh, get the resources we need to make it. The moment we believe the gates are open and the flood energy is unleashed, but both hope and despair are self-fulfilling prophecies. Number nine, trusting too much is better than trusting too little or not trusting at all. People were asked how much they trust others on a scale of one to ten. Income peaked at those responded with the number eight. Those with the highest levels of trust had income 70% lower than the eights. Research shows they are more likely to be taken advantage of. Those, uh, those with the lowest levels of trust had an income of 14.5 lower than AIDS. That loss is equivalent of not going to college. They missed many opportunities by not trusting others or second-guessing everything what people might do. Number 10. Sometimes empathy beats objectivity. 
uh, from an interview with Wharton Professor Adam Grant, author of Give and Take, A, Rus a Revolutionary Approach to Success. There is a great study of radiologists by Turner and colleagues showing that when a radiologist just saw a photo of a patient whose x-ray they were about to scan, they emphasized more with the person, seeing the person as more of a human being as opposed to just an x-ray. As a result, they wrote more the reports and they had greater diagnostic accuracy significantly. Number 11. The most powerful goals aren't about being perfect, they are about getting better. Get better goals, increase motivation, make tasks more interesting, and replenish energy. This effect even carries over to subsequent tasks. We are nine things successful people do differently. Get better goals, on the other hand, are practically bulletproof. When we think about what we are going to do in terms of learning and mastering, accepting what we make, may make, some mistakes along the way, we stay motivated despite the setbacks that might happen because of them. Research shows that focus on getting better also enhances the experience of working. We naturally find that we do more interesting, enjoyable things when we think about it in terms of progress rather than perfection. Folks, faith in humanity. These are the 11 studies to restore your hope in the future. Number one, you bounce better. Uh, you bounce back better from tougher problems. I have noticed that the people that have faced more things in life, excuse me, have faced more things in life are the ones that are stronger and bounce back quicker and better. Number two, regret is not that scary. There are times in everyone's life where we need to regret certain things, where we need to apologize for things. Number three, what does not kill you makes you stronger, is often true. If it uh, puts you through a lot of pain and, and you have a lot of misery because of something that happened in your life, it will, I promise you, make you stronger. Um, reverse PTSD exists. Sometimes terrible events make us better people. These are proven facts. People that have gone through possibly uh, car wrecks, or for an example, the train bombings in Madrid, for example, back in 2004. These people were found to be stronger after the event. Number five, rarely in life are you limited by your genes. How often does natural talent limit you what you are capable of? 95% of the cases prove in fact that they were not uh, affected by it. Number six, you don't need to win the lottery to be happy. What you need to do is to be happy within your heart. Of course, the lottery always helps us because money always makes a lot of people happy. Number seven, helping others help you. Perfect example is these videos. When I help you, and I always tell you folks this, when I help you with these videos, I help myself each and every single day. Eight, both hope and despair are self-fulfilling prophecies. Hope and despair. Of course, we always hope not to have despair, but hope and despair will make you stronger. Number nine, trusting too much is better than not trusting at all or too little. Number ten, sometimes empathy beats objectivity. And number eleven, the most powerful goals aren't about being perfect, they're about getting that better. You shouldn't have a goal on just being the best or we're just getting better. Your goal is is to improve step by step. You know, I always tell you folks, all changes in life happen with very small steps. And that includes setting goals. It includes uh, what are we going to do next week. Everything happens in small increments, including your sobriety. You ever hear the term 24 hours at a time, one day at a time? Well, remember, these changes in sobriety, when they start from day one of you accepting your uh, disease until maybe a year or two down the road, that 24 hours is a small step to the next 24 hours to the next 24. And the same applies to any changes in life. All changes happen in small steps. Like babies, we first learn to sit, then we learn to crawl, then we learn to walk slowly, and then as we get older we learn to run. The same applies to 
changes. They all have to happen in small steps. You cannot change from one thing to another in a single giant leap. Small steps, folks. Just try to always remember to lead by example in your own house. Lead by example by not drinking, by not smoking, and by not using profanity. And your children will follow. Have hope in your fellow workers. Have hope and faith in your fellow um, family members, your neighbors. Look for the best in people instead of, like most humans do, is look for the worst. Don't become somebody that's going to sit there and knock and criticize other people's actions. Look in the mirror. What do you see when you look in the mirror? When you're done with this video, go to the bathroom, to the medicine cabinet, and look in the mirror. What do you see? If you see somebody that you feel very satisfied with and very happy with, then congratulations. But if you even see someone that might be judging other people a little too much or may, maybe not trusting people, changes have to be made. Those changes include your personality, your perception of other people, maybe even your drug and alcohol abuse if you are doing that. Let today be the first day of your new life, folks. Let it happen today. And remember, when you start thinking positive in here, in your surrounding in life, positive things will happen. Eliminate the negativity. I would say let the sunshine from the outside come into your heart and into your home. Remember, make today the first day of your new life. A sober today, I promise you, will give you a better tomorrow. If you continuously live by that, 24 hours at a time, the next day is automatically going to be a better day. But you've got to repeat that over and over. And that only doesn't only apply in sobriety, it applies in your own life. Live today, make today a full life, a full day. And then tomorrow, God willing, you do the same pattern. Sobriety and your own life. I hope to God, no matter where you are, watching in my audience, and a lot of you might be in a homeless shelter, or in jail, or in a rehab center, possibly sitting in church, or even in one of the uh, schools watching me. No matter where you are, I hope that you have the best day of your life, but I really hope, no matter where you're watching me, that you have a sober rest of your life, and may God bless